Spoiler time, ladies and gentlemen. Woo! Spoiler, 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 spoiler. We are doing a spoiler cast today about Bioshock Infinite because everybody wants us to. And unlike a lot of the previous spoiler casts that we've done, uh, you know, this is for a game that, you know, we spent a good hour, we spent a good two hours talking about the end of, of Mass Effect 3 and why it sucked. We spent time talking about Assassin's Creed 3 and why we didn't like that. But this one, we're going we're gonna to talk about a game that we really liked. That's Bioshock Infinite. So I'm Jeff, and I have with me Mr. Nick Hodges. Hello, Nick. Hello. And Mr. Jason Murphy. Hello. And let's go ahead and get this ball rolling. Now, I'm this may be a little bit more all over the place than our previous uh, spoiler cast, but I figured that a good place to start would be basically uh, the basic plot overview of kind of what's going on in Bioshock Infinite. Now, once again, before we start, this is going to be total spoilers. Spoilers for Bioshock, spoilers for Bioshock Infinite, spoilers for Bioshock 2, spoilers for Minerva's Den. Fuck, man, we'll spoil whatever. I don't care. There are racists in every reality. <laughs> That's the spoiler. <laughs> um, so, yeah, but you know what? I tell you what, before we get started, Nick... You had some questions about Bioshock, which may line up a little bit with some of the folks listening to this podcast. So why don't we talk a little bit about your your questions about the ending of Bioshock Infinite, and we can segue into the story as we need to. Okay, I like how you pin this all on me, saying that I haven't got a bloody clue as to what's going on. <laughs> I, have, I have some clue as to what happens. It's just that uh, this game is very deep and... It was one of those games that I spent like a couple of days afterwards really thinking about it. So, like, you know, just it, a couple of questions. Like, I, is, I have. is it? Is it yeah. that deep? I think it's no. deep. No, yeah. Jason. No, <laughs> I see. I, you know what? I think this is. I think this is one of those places where, like, Jason and I's relentless consumption of science fiction novels for the last like twenty or thirty years puts us at a bit of an advantage because it was like oh yeah the parallel reality thing i remember that episode of star trek that was cool <laughs> no 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 i'm all cool about parallel reality it's just that you know a couple of questions here and there i have i mean i'm not a complete mongoloid that i didn't understand as to <laughs> the concept of parallel realities it's just that why, why, like okay first thing up all right <laughs> so you we all find out at the very end of the game that uh brooker dewitt is uh comstock and but how are they both existing in the same reality? They are not. They are not existing in the same reality. That is the first answer, is that the reality that the game at least starts in with Booker DeWitt or with uh, Comstock and Columbia um, is not the same reality that Booker DeWitt starts in. The Lutess twins actually get Booker DeWitt to act as an agent to stop Comstock from crafting Elizabeth into the apparently just New York destroying force that she is determined to be later on in the game. Uh, it's, it's actually a scene later on at the end where he is in the office and uh, one of the little portal doohickeys opens up and they yank him in and he's like all jerked up and shit in his head and like he's trying to figure out and this they say like he's he's making his he's reconfiguring his brain to fill in his own backstory and stuff like that so this the story you know i maybe we should back up for a second and just talk a little bit about the outlines of the story so that yeah yeah, yeah okay sure. because yeah it's uh, part of me is like everybody's gonna know all this already but fuck it we'll just go over this real fast um yeah tell you what while, while nick may not be a mongoloid there are going to be some people listening to this who are very much water-headed fucktards. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the water-headed fucktards. Well, all right, so let's let's um let's break it down real fast. Basically, you have two realities, two main realities in this game. Um in one reality, okay, they both start with Booker DeWitt doing his Booker DeWittiness, he's wounded knee, and he's a, what do they call those guys? Pinkertons, he's doing bad things, he's unhappy or whatever. Um, in one reality, he goes, which was revealed at the very end of the game, he goes to a preacher to be, basically be baptized to get his sins absolved. And in, let's call it reality number one, reality number one, he accepts this baptism and renames himself as, what's Comstock's first name, Kevin or... Jason or um, it's uh, Franklin Lamar Lamarcus. Father, Father Comstock. What's that? <laughs> Marcus? No, it was Lamarcus. 
Lamarcus. <laughs> LaMarcus Comstock. I like that. Yeah. Zachary <laughs> Hale Comstock. What a fucking mouthful that is. Uh, Zachary Hale Comstock. And then after that point, he is visited by uh, an archangel, which uh, if there's one of the things in this game that I still can't figure out, it's who the fuck is this archangel who tells him that he could build this giant Columbia place. So he builds this giant Columbia place, and he takes it up into the clouds and blah, 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 blah. And what you've got the events of Columbia where um, – what do they do? They come to – they put down the Boxer Rebellion. They, the Columbia comes in and firebombs the Boxer Rebellion, and then they secede from the United States, and he decides that everybody down on the ground likes butt sex or whatever. And um, and then he decides – okay. <clears throat> Sorry, this is really complicated. <laughs> it is. It's deep, I'm telling you. All right. The, so, the butt sex is. <laughs> the butt sex. The butt sex is very deep. <laughs> <laughs> now, in the creation of Columbia, he hires the, this this uh, scientist uh, Ros- Rosalind Lutes, who develops the technology to keep Columbia up in the air, which is not giant blimps, which a l- kind of little pisses me off from time to time, but whatever, because I like giant blimps. But keeps it up there, and in the, the course of creating this, she also discovers she also creates this machine that allows her to look into alternate realities, into the future, into the past, etc., etc., etc. Over the course of making this, um, Comstock is in some I, I i don't remember exactly what happens but through either an accident or just proximity to this machine he becomes sterile and can no longer have children so <sighs> thus we get let's let's jump over from here to uh booker dewitt number two who does not accept the uh, the baptism from father who's it's um and ha- gets married has a kid his wife dies during childbirth and has his kid. He also has gambling debts and a really shitty office, and he lives in black and white or whatever's going on there. So, <laughs> yeah, Comstock- this reality has never discovered color. Exactly. <laughs> so Comstock wants a kid and and realizes that there is an alternate reality where his persona has had a child, and he sends Robert Lutes, Rosalind's uh, clone alternative reality brother twin lover whatever he is uh over to basically offer to pay off booker dewitt's debts if he will give um robert his child who turns out to be elizabeth who was originally was anna Uh. so basically booker dewitt number two sells his kid in timeline number two to uh to uh robert lutes and and comstock who then attempts to abscond with that child through a portal back into reality number one. And at the last minute, um, Booker DeWitt has a crisis of conscience and doesn't want to do it and tries to get her back. And all he ends up doing is um, delaying to the point where Anna Elizabeth's little pinky is chopped off by the closing portal and left in reality number two. So reality number one now has its Anna slash Elizabeth. Reality number two has a Booker DeWitt that is now just six different varieties of all fucked up in the head. He brands his daughter's uh, initials on his hand. He takes to drink it or whatever. Now in reality number one, the Lutesses start to figure out that Comstock wants to raise Elizabeth to kind of be the new savior of mankind and to raise all the dirty sodomites down on the ground with Columbia later on in the future. And they decide they want to stop that. Well, Comstock figures out that they know what he's going to do. And so he has Fink sabotage their machine, which busts them up into reality. So they're just everywhere talking crazy talk all the time. And... But they're not they're they're down, but they're not out because what they do is they go and grab Booker DeWitt from twenty years after he sold his kid and bring him into reality number one to essentially rescue her and take down <coughs> Columbia. Oh God, have I been talking for a long time? Yeah, yeah my, my question, my is, nose started is, bleeding <laughs> like I slipped into a different reality. <laughs> yeah. so my question is. When did Comstock decide to be racist? Because Booker DeWitt doesn't seem to be such a racist guy when he is in reality number one. That's the DLC. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. Comstock's racist adventure. <laughs> that sounds like DLC. Um, I, you know, I that I can't answer that. I can't answer that question. I mean, I don't know the dude. The dude obviously, like when he decided to build a big floating city in the sky that was better than everything down on the ground, obviously let a little bit off his rocker. 
you know, at some point. So, I mean, I don't, I never got the impression that Comstock really had it. Let's say had it all going on upstairs. Like he always seemed like he was a few, um, you know, a, a few carrots short of a bunch, so to speak. Well, you know, uh, that, and that's that's the big flaw. I mean, it, that you know, the floating city and the racism things. Okay, it's like, what? Who's gonna build all these floating cities? Mm-hmm. The white Where do people. Where you get the money for that? No, <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna have well, the illegal they... immigrants build the floating cities. Uh, yeah, but I guess I guess that was established that they had. Uh, Put uh, all of the other minorities in a uh, in a subservient position and working for them. They weren't all about exterminating them. So, never mind. Yeah. Carry on. Well, no, it actually it actually has a, a lot of parallels to the first Bioshock. There's actually there's a um, <clears throat> a recording in the first Bioshock that I remember that was from I believe it was uh, Fontaine slash Atlas that talked about you know Andrew Ryan said come to this city and 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 you know work and gain all the rewards of of your own the sweat of your own brow it'll be paradise when you all get to live the way you want to and he says yeah but somebody has to clean the toilets in in Rapture. And that's the thing that the <clears throat> that your savior person, whoever it is, between the two games, d- doesn't really ever. Th- that's the dirty little secret is that not everybody gets to live like kings, you know, walking around clean and everything. That there has to be people that are doing the dirty work, and that that tends to get swept under the rug. And in bio, in both Bioshocks, uh, that is essentially what turns into the ruin of the world is the fact that the working class um, essentially revolts, and in Bio, in the original Bioshock, it was more of a it was more of a, a calculated thing where <clears throat> Fontaine had gathered up the people who had been forgotten in Andrew Ryan's glorious plan and basically banded them together and bought them off to be to do the things that he needed done to try to wrench control of Rapture from um, from Andrew Ryan. Whereas in Bioshock Infinite, uh, there's a question of whether the Vox Populi would even exist if it wasn't for. Uh, uh, um, what's her face? Daisy Fitzroy being framed for Comstock's wife's murder and being forced into a position where she had to 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 go underground and put together this resistance because she had been unjustly accused of something and saw that this place was not as utopian as it originally seemed like it was. Um, yes. <clears throat> so. I don't know, but let, Nick, let's get back to the questions. We've talked. <laughs> Jeff's writing a, a, a research paper. On yeah, I love it. He's like, uh, Nick, what are you talking about? This is really simple. And he's like sweating and he's stuttering like, uh, this is. He pulls, he pulls out his Wiley e. Coyote but, diagram and his whiteboard yeah. with the flow charts. You should see I've got one wall in my room that's got a bunch of strings going between it to different things that I've written. <laughs> you know, pe- pe- people's uh, pictures up on the wall with X's through them and stuff like that. I'm, I'm getting there. I'm getting to the crazy person phase. He's I mean, scratching yeah. its sores on his arm. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, okay. So th- Nick, that answered that. I mean, that answered your first question. But I'm I'm curious to know if you have any more. I think that was probably my uh, my biggest one. I mean, like um, I know that towards the very end mm-hmm. that he has convinced that he has to kill Father Comstock until there's the revelation that he is in fact. Father Comstock. Yes. Mm-hmm. And uh, when he is killed before the baptism, he allows himself to be killed by all the other uh, uh, Elizabeths. Was mm-hmm. it Elizabeth or Emily? Elizabeth. Yeah, Elizabeth, yeah. And there's only one Elizabeth left. So that suggests that there is another reality possible. But is it just the one? Well, see, that's... Next- a, that's well, Jason, were you going to say something? No. Okay. Uh, th- that's actually a, an extremely good question because... Um, <laughs> It doesn't show that final Elizabeth waking out of existence, but it does also cut before that part. So the the question that you come up with is the reason... Did the top keep spinning? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, what's in the briefcase? Come on, man. Uh, is it the, there's, a, there's an audio log in the game that says that Elizabeth's reality-bending powers are directly related to the fact that when her pinky was cut off, that the only reason that she has those powers is because she essentially exists in more than one reality. That because there's a part of her that was trapped in this other reality, uh, that she is able to essentially manipulate the tears to move back and forth mm. and move between different realities. That doesn't make so, any sense, because why did they want her to begin with? Who? Comstock. The other Comstock. The old Comstock. See, I don't necessarily, th- I don't necessarily think that his original motivation for getting her had anything to do with 
her having superpowers really? that had to do with her. He just wanted a kid. He was sterile, yeah. and he wanted a kid, so he found a version of himself that wasn't sterile, did have a kid that was down in his luck that he could take that kid from, and that then once he, they brought that kid over, and it turns out that, that she was manifesting powers, that then they built Songbird, and they built the uh, thing Spo- that sucks to... Spoiler for yeah. something not Bioshock, okay? Okay. For Fringe, <laughs> actually. All right. Fringe. I haven't seen Fringe. I'm going to go. And la, la, spoiler. La, la, la. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it, I mean, that, it, that happens like almost exactly mm-hmm. in, uh, in, 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 okay, not in spoiler. Spoilers are continuing. Tune out, <laughs> not Bioshock Infinite spoilers, just for a second. That happens almost exactly in Fringe. Yeah. In the first season, uh, and yeah, the first season, the, the main mad scientist guy, he was dealing with alternate realities and stuff and you start to realize, okay, there are alternate realities going on. And you realize that in his reality, his son has died, played by, what the fuck's his name? Pacey from Dawson's Creek. Okay. I think that was his name. I don't remember. I saw like one episode of Dawson's Creek. Don't judge me. Shut the fuck up. Anyway. Um, <laughs> and so he goes into another reality and grabs that kid because his kid has died. And so, yeah, when I'm watching, everyone's like, oh, it's so deep, it's so deep. I'm like, yeah, it's, it's really deep if you've never seen Fringe or, 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 uh, fucking sliders for God's sake, you know? <laughs> well, like, it, you know, you know why I didn't just... think it was, it was too deep? Because I've read X-Men comics for 30 years. <laughs> it's like, I'm sorry. I, if you can explain to me Cable and Apocalypse and X-Men, you're not going to have any problem with Bioshock Infinite. Yeah. Well. Okay. Well, I mean, okay, here's another bit. This is the part of the game where I started to get a little bit confused. It's what, right about the time where he has to go get guns for uh, Fitzroy. And he first goes to get Le- uh, Lynn, but yep. Lynn is dead. Yep. So they go into another parallel reality where he's alive. Yep. And then they go into another parale- uh, parallel reality where the, the weapons... Yes. So did it ever return to the original parallel reality in the first place? It would appear not. See, um, and, and that, that's another problem with the stories. Why didn't they, it's like, well, we're so far away from that other reality where they gave us this job. Why don't we go to one where everything's just hunky fucking dory? Yeah. Uh, oh, why do they bump into their other, uh, you know, <laughs> characters? Oh, wait, yeah, yes, of course, they're dead. Yeah, I would they're... say that at that particular point in the story, the, uh, uh, fuck, what's it called? The thing that's sucking away her power. The siphon. The, the siphon is still active, and so at that point in the story, Elizabeth is only able to open up existing tears to other realities and not able to generate them for herself. Because it's only at the end of the game when they turn the siphon off, uh, when they destroy the giant statue of her or whatever, that she is able to essentially at will move between different places. Like the only people who seem to be – and I don't even know if they have any agency over it. The only people who seem to be moving between different realities – at will seem to be the Lutessas, yeah, but they don't appear to be able to do anything about that. They appear to just be like, they seem pretty cool, all things considered. <laughs> They're just unhinged from reality, just wandering around, doing the same shit over but and yeah, over again. I, I mean, okay, uh, it's, she, uh, okay. Elizabeth says at one point, okay, if I open this tear, there's no going back. Right. And then it's, well, all of our work that we're supposed to be doing, the whole reason we're going to get these guns is in that reality we were just in. And if we're not going to be able to go back, then why are we fucking bothering? um yeah well question i mean i i kind of found it i thought that that was i thought that that had more to do with booker not considering the consequences of his actions and elizabeth um not giving a shit about what reality she's got to go to in order to be able to finally get the fuck out of here uh get the fuck out of out of columbia i mean at least that's what i got out of it i mean the other there's also the question of there's a there's a whole there's a whole subplot in here about how moving to a different reality essentially rewrites your version like your your memory rewrites your personality to kind of conform to that reality that you know when they bring booker into the into the reality where uh comstock exists like one of the reasons that he doesn't remember he doesn't remember giving his child away he thinks that he's been sent to rescue uh, Elizabeth is because he's essentially rewriting his memories to conform with the new reality that he's gone to. So I don't know. I mean, it's it's, it's a really good question because I mean, all things considered, yeah, uh, this Elizabeth and this Booker Comstock totally succeeded in this one reality, and there are a gajillion realities where everything is just totally fucked yeah. forever. Yeah. See, right. also lost. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not talk about that. Okay, okay. Uh, so Booker DeWitt is dead in the third reality they go to. Why is Elizabeth dead as well? How can we never bump into her? Or do they explain that? I 
believe that she I don't I can't remember. I can't remember. But I yeah. will say that was an excellent red herring as putting him as like the the leader. No, because no wait, he he I don't know if she was in that reality because That's a bit. Well, because didn't didn't I thought there was an audio log from him that said that he didn't ever find Elizabeth, so he just hooked up with Daisy and the and the Vox Populi and waged war against the found uh, against the the founders and of Columbia. Oh god damn it. Too many things. Too many yeah. things. <laughs> it's, it's complicated. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I will say that um I, I did want to say, though, I want to think, I mean, we're getting a little long here, but I want to move on over to um, one of the things that I thought was really interesting in this that go, m- kind of works deeper and deeper once you start looking at it. Is I don't even know if you can really call this game a, a sequel to Bioshock. Like, it's almost more of like a, a reimagining or a retelling of Bioshock. Yeah. As you start that, was, that was actually what uh, I was kind of, I had kind of written it off. I was like, okay, yeah, it was cool, whatever. But then when I realized, oh, wait, it was uh, kind of a parallel retelling of Bioshock. And that mm-hmm. that was that it was all right there in the title, Bioshock Infinite. Uh, yeah. That was when I I got a lot more respect for it. I was like, oh, okay, okay, I get it. That's that's better. Yeah, yeah. And that was very clever. I mean, when you actually go to Rapture and Booker T. Woods asking, "Where are we?" and she's just saying, "It's a different world." Like, uh, a different world than we would do. I thought that was really cool, dude. When, was like when she what? does that shit and Songbird is drowning, and then I turned around and saw that fu- the first area of Rapture, and I was just like, "What?" Oh, what? <laughs> you, you didn't like it? No, I loved it. I was having oh. like some kind of crazy happiness seizure. Nud, <laughs> call it nud gas. It's called an or. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, no! It, was no, like no. A, it felt like a sneeze, but better. I don't know what it was. It's kind of weird. Um, but yeah, right. I mean, there's also other stuff in here. Uh, the stuff that I only started thinking about, um, like after we got through, after I got through with the game, but. Um, Stuff like how when Elizabeth brings you back to life when you die in the game, she basically never – they never seem to reference it through the entire game, but she pulls out this syringe full of green stuff that looks like Adam and injects you with it, just like a freaking little sister. And I've seen pictures online that have like her outfit, the kind of blue and white outfit that she wears, kind of compared to some of the little grimy little sisters that have the same color scheme on their outfit. Like – there's just a hell of a lot going on here. You got, you know, the protagonist, uh, Booker DeWitt, and then Jack from Bioshock. You've got Elizabeth and the Little Sisters. You've got Comstock and Andrew Ryan, both as kind of alternate versions of these kind of utopian madmen. The Lutez twins and, uh, what's your name? Tenenbaum from, from Bioshock. They were both instruments, both instrumental in resolving the situation at the end, even though they were kind of side, they're, nutty scientist characters songbird and the big daddy is real obvious but then the one i was thinking about was uh daisy fitzroy and um uh frank fontaine as like the catalyst for the 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 eventual kind of crumbling of of eden as it were um since they both are the ones who kind of brought the rebellion up and um, in in the games respectively, I don't know. Just you probably even make more stuff, more parallels between some of the sub characters. Uh, it's just been so long since I played Bioshock that I wouldn't know who to who to compare like uh, what Jeremiah Fink to in the original Bioshock. I did uh, get that original feeling when I just started the game. Like we're going to another lighthouse. It's just like uh, the other Bioshock, and then I thought nothing of it until the end of the game, and you see all well, those thousands of different lighthouses, and I thought that was really interesting so essentially each lighthouse could be uh a, a future bioshock game if what? they really go that far yeah 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 i mean there's a, a like it's interesting it's interesting to actually consider the idea of them of bioshock becoming a franchise that always tells a similar story but always in a very unique and new way like you know you could set the the bioshock story in a lot of different places and that the the story itself like this was so different from the original Bioshock that even though there were so many parallels, it still just stood up totally as its own game. Like it totally stands on its own two feet. It's it's totally worth playing. It's not like, well, I've played Bioshock. Do I even need to play this one? Is it just the same thing? Like, no, not even at all. And it makes me interested to see if you could take this the structure and spin it off into other games that have the same the same uh, the themes of you know utopia and dystopia and rebellion and choice and that sort of stuff. It's going to get stale, always... though. 
You think yeah, so? Yeah, I because it, they're going to have to get really clever, and then there's going to come a point where it's like, okay, who's the Fontaine guy in this one? Who's the Elizabeth? All right, there it is. You know, and all of these tropes. It's 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 going to be like Taco Bell, where they use like the same <laughs> six ingredients to make a bunch of stuff, and ultimately. It's just gonna flatline, and it's like, okay, we we did everything. It's and everybody's gonna be so used to it; it's all gonna taste the same. But see, I think I almost think that you could use that you can use that expectation to dick with people. That you can say like, oh, this guy is obviously the Andrew Ryan for this new Bioshock. Oh wait, holy shit, it's not. It's totally yeah. the the little sisters are the Andrew Ryan of but this. That's one, only gonna know, work whatever. a few times, you know, maybe true, just once. True. Maybe so. I don't know. I was just I was really. Really, really satisfied with how they messed with the expectation of people who had played the original Bioshock with this one. Um, so I don't know. As long as they aren't turning it out as a yearly franchise, I I think they could probably do it at least at least two more times before they just totally have run out of ideas. Um, I think, but then I'm not a real big big fan of running out of ideas. I don't think that's other other games have already done this though, retold mm. the story in it with a different twist, like Mario Brothers. That's mm-hmm. what Mario Brothers is. It's just their alternate reality. <laughs> Zelda. Yeah. See, that's the thing. Link is just the dude going and rescuing the princess over and over and, uh, rescuing Zelda. So yeah, it's all, um, so f- fuck you, Bioshock. You're not so original, are you? In some way, uh, Mel Gear Solid 2 is also a kind of repeat of the first game. Yeah. So it's like, <laughs> we're sorry. <laughs> Your, uh, what is it? Your princess is in another lighthouse. <laughs> um, you know, it's funny that you mentioned that because I was actually, when I was sitting around trying to think about, oh, just thinking about this game, I was actually thinking that the, the whole idea of the, the lighthouse and the repeating story and whatever could honestly apply to more than Bioshock. It could almost be a statement of just saying that, like, look at the tropes of this game and know how many games have these things. Have, you know, um, a, 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 a kind of batshit mad villain that have a woman or princess or whatever that need to be rescued that has a crazy scientist character, you know, that has a, a, a main character with a, with a, um, a muddy past that you, you know, kind of fill in as the game goes on. You get things like, you know, big daddies that are analog songbird that are analog for bosses and things like that. I mean, a lot of this, uh, I like the idea that, that the lighthouse is at the end of, at the end of the game are more than even just Bioshock, that they're all video games kind of to a certain extent, because a lot of games follow this, a very similar line, a very similar plot line to what we see here of, you know, heroes introduced to a problem and has to rescue somebody and they overcome the adversity of the entire world being against them in order to, you know, win out at the end. I don't know. Uh, I thought it was more like Narnia, to be honest. Like the lighthouse was like a wardrobe or something. Uh-huh. <laughs> so you just go to you just go into a magical world every time you go into the lighthouse. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> it makes more sense. Yeah. Now, uh, here's one thing that we've we've talked about that Jason, you and I talked about, but that um, a few people put forward that apparently in the original Bioshock, it was <clears throat> it was said at some point that only an- that at the point when they got there after the the shit had gone down that only Andrew Ryan was able to operate the bathospheres that went in and out of Bioshock, which brings up an interesting question of why is Booker able to use the bathysphere to take them up to the lighthouse at the end of Bioshock Infinite? Yeah. I think that was I think Andrew Ryan is one? just another version of Comstock, and uh, uh, yeah, it's uh, you know just another. Um, in a different reality, it's uh, his name is Booker Dewitt, or uh, or yeah, it's getting all the names confused. But yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, I thought it, uh, when Booker Dewitt enters Rapture, it was at the very end of Bioshock One because you see all that rubble which you cause um, in in Bioshock One. So no, I guess it's, like, it's not. No, actually, that the the. Uh... Actually, it's before Bioshock. Oh, right, right, right. Because Everything. No, you didn't cause all the rubble in Bioshock. It was already screwed up when you get there. No, but I mean, I could tell you specifically. Okay, I could tell you because I'm such a goddamn nerd. I could tell you specifically that the rapture that they are in is post 
the riots and Rapture getting all fucked up, but it is before the introduction of Jack into the storyline because the area that you're in, that area in Bioshock, is like the first room that you go into. There's a the Gatherer's Garden where you get the first uh, plasma that, that lets you um, the the shock one, the shock hand. But the thing is that when you leave that area, like when, the 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 window that uh, that they're looking at where Songbird is drowning. Right next to that, there's a, a passageway that goes from that to like the next area. In Bioshock, when the plane crashes, that plane is lodged inside of that corridor, directly to the right of where Songbird drowns. So, because that plane is not there, it means that Jack cannot have crashed. It means that Bioshock can't have happened yet. So it's Jesus, either directly Jeff. before... I know. I know, man. <laughs> <laughs> I know. This is the problem with me and games that I like, is I know way too much about them. <laughs> um, so, let's see. Let me th- take a look at some of the other stuff I have. This is something that I really wanted to talk about that I um, that we I thought actually worked really well, but I don't know if it would ever work well again or if it's something that could even happen with another video game. But I don't know if you guys, for anybody who's been actually following Bioshock Infinite and in its development, um, when you play the full game, you would you would notice that there are a lot of things that they showed in like E three demos and trailers and stuff like that that are just not in the game at all, like completely and totally not in the game whatsoever. Um, like the E three demo that I saw in two thousand eleven had Elizabeth trying to bring a horse back to life using tears, and then she ended up opening a portal to and it was looked at modern day. There was the the uh, movie marquee that said Revenge of the Jedi on it and there's a car that came towards him and she closes it up right away but like look at this version of Bioshock Bioshock Infinite there are not even any real horses in the game there are all those electric horses and so I thought that it worked brilliantly because you you would see these little pieces of the game and you would start to make assumptions about what the game was about or about how it was going to go or things like that or you even start looking for those while you were playing the game and they weren't in there it was almost like having a fake trailer or like a fake um, gameplay video, kind of the, I guess, kind of the opposite of what happened with the Aliens Colonial Marines <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> demo. <laughs> I was, I was mainly just hoping that they were going to include the skylines because they showed um, in the E3 demo you flying around, going from place to place, and then suddenly you have it in this game. So I was, well, I was really looking forward. Yeah, to that it. that mechanic yeah. was too fun for them to ditch. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you know what? There would have been a million different ways to fuck that up, but they did not. Like it was always just super fun whirling around on those things and doing stuff. Yeah. Um so let's see. I guess you know one of the questions that we never got around to was at the end of the very 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 end of the game in the post credit sequence. Uh did you see Jason Nick you guys both saw this, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh where he wakes up again? I'm not sure, did he, does, does Booker do wake up after he dies? Or is this going back in time to when Booker DeWitt was just about to sell off his baby? It is entirely yeah. unclear what the fuck is when going on. When he's going into the, to because, look at the crib and it doesn't show you if there's anything in there or not. Yeah. Right. Because the office that he's in looks a lot like his fucked up rundown, I'm in debt office. But if all of the Booker DeWitts who went to get baptized have been drowned, so none of them ever become Comstock that or whatever, I mean, just if he went to that location, he's been off to, essentially in whatever timeline mojo the the uh, Elizabeth managed to, to work with. Maybe this is a timeline where like he never went to that. He never even considered it having religion. But then the question becomes. Are, is the voice that we're hearing the voice of the Booker DeWitt from the game, or is this an al- alternate Booker DeWitt who is, doesn't have any idea what's going on in the game and is just worried for some unknown reason? Maybe Has- he converted to Islam instead. <laughs> <laughs> Parallel realities. He's like, fuck all that. I'm a Buddhist. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, why, are only the, why is there only two possible outcomes? Seriously, you just said so yourself. There are a million, million worlds out there. I, I really doubt that. To solve the problem, you have to drown Booker DeWitt at, <laughs> at, at bat, when he's being baptized. 
I was just waiting for them to like have just that sequence of them drowning him turn into like an infinite sequence that lasted forever of them going through all of the realities to drown all of the Booker DeWitts because apparently in the billion, million, jillion infinite realities, you have to get all of them out of the way. And if you could just change one thing, if you could affect, if you could bring in all your little doppelgangers to affect one thing in all the realities, then why the fuck didn't you just, I don't know, kill the dude that was going to baptize Booker DeWitt or Make him late or something. Like, did you have to? Do you have to murder the guy? Like, or maybe I mean, just say, he's not- "Listen, here's here's a bunch of audio logs. Listen to these before yeah. you make this decision." Okay. <laughs> You're about to do some serious shit, mate. Please, okay, just don't. <laughs> I didn't even realize it the first time through. But do you, do you guys realize that uh, the priest that baptizes Booker is the same one that baptizes Comstock? Yeah. Well, I guess he had such a pleasant experience with the guy that he hired him later on to work at the, you know, gateway into Columbia. But see, that guy still hasn't figured out how to, like, he still hasn't figured out how to baptize people right because he almost drowns Booker when he originally comes into Columbia. When he wakes back up and they say, like, that, that he fills your lungs with water so that you'll appreciate the air or whatever. And he's like, dude, fuck that <laughs> <Yeah>. guy. <laughs> um. <clears throat> So there's another thing that I kind of wanted to bring up and talk about that we can't really get into without spoiling the game too much. Is I found it interesting that it seems like, um, you know, when the game starts, it seems to have a pretty heavy, it, it, it goes pretty quickly into this kind of heavy, you know, obviously anti-racist uh, uh, message with, you know, the horrible way that minorities are being treated in Colombia and stuff like that. But I thought it that was interesting that when they moved to some of those alternate realities where the Vox Populi have kind of risen up, that the Vox Populi almost seem like as, I mean, that their, their rebellion is so savage that you can almost feel bad for some of the people who may have been ignorant and, and shitty and everything, but ended up just getting like you know chopped down in the street by a bunch of of rebels with machine guns. I don't know. What do you guys feel that at all? Oh Am no, I totally racist. No, that I mean that was <laughs> that was a big crux of the story. It was it was almost a be careful what you wish for. It's like uh, yeah, it's like it was you know damned if you do, damned if you don't. The uh, um, whereas uh, yeah, there were people oppressed and everything. It was peaceful. So you know, there's a philosophical. Again, not defending racism. There's a philosophical uh, implication here, but uh, it's like, yeah, while uh, the status quo was peaceful and everything, there were people who were horribly oppressed, and there was racism running rampant and that was in charge. But then again, the uh, liberators turned it into a war zone, and you know, it was, uh, yeah, it was meet the old boss <laughs> or meet the new boss, same as the old boss, you know? Yeah, yeah. It kind of reminded me of the French Revolution a little bit. Like it was so bloody and uh merciless the way uh you know the white people were being cut down but to be perfectly honest they they kind of had it coming so you know i, I gotta side up with the vox yeah. popular yeah speaking speaking of which why like i still don't maybe you guys can answer this question now that i think about it why did elizabeth have to stab daisy what could they guys have like locked her up or chained her to a wall and take her gun away or I don't know, like, why did she have to... I don't understand why she had to die. She was trying to... She was going to kill that uh, kid, I think. Well, yeah, but you could have, like, knocked the gun out of her hand or portaled in, like, a dinosaur or some step on her. I don't... don't (laughs) Yeah, that's the answer. She's going to kill that kid. The only solution? (laughs) T-Rex. <laughs> so it kills both of them. Everybody knows that T Rexes are on the side of justice, Jason. <laughs> T Rexes uh, have a deeply innate moral fiber that you cannot fuck with. <laughs> but no, it just it seemed weird to me that for a character that was so vocal about not about being so shocked by Booker's acts of violence early on in the game that you know, whew, she turns around quick and then like, yeah, I'm gonna stab that bitch with some scissors. What the fuck? <laughs> It, it seems like the major theme of the game is that uh, there's almost no free will. So any decision you make at a major turning point goes down a path that cannot be changed whatsoever. So that that was going to happen and no That's interesting because they kind of deal with but, that with the whole coin toss uh, thing that keeps popping up with the Lutesses. Exactly, yeah, yeah. I thought that was really interesting because I tried to see if you could flip for tails instead of heads and, and you can't. Yes, you can. It's randomized. Yeah. When I played the game for the first time, uh, my Booker chose tails. Said tails, and they said nope. They, they have the exact same. They have the exact same reaction either way. Is that the coin always flips the same way, but Booker can choose something different. But that choice means nothing because the outcome is almost always the same. 
Um, which, you know, it's, it's one of those things where they have, <clears throat> it's almost playing on, <clears throat> excuse me, it's almost playing on, uh, the expectation of gamers in, in the way that choice gets integrated into games in the, like the, what we've seen in the last year, where you have a few different places in the game where you can make a choice to either, um, you know, like at the beginning where you can throw the ball, you can not throw the ball, or you can, not do anything, but no matter what you do, the outcome of that is always the same. You always get your hand grabbed. They always come up on you, and you always grab the you know the sky hook and totally fuck that dude up with it. Um, but it's interesting because it 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 kind of factors in. There's some small ramifications, like if you save the couple there, or if you attempt to throw the ball at the announcer, then that couple shows back up later on to give you an item. But unlike Bioshock. Unlike the original Bioshock, where you had the choice to harvest or save the little sisters, there really isn't any way to alter where this story ends up. It's almost, it's weird because it's almost, it, because almost the whole entire point of the game is talking about like fate, like fate and destiny and the fact that we have free will and that you can change the future, but that in, in a whole other way, there is no way to change what's happened here because it always plays out the exact same way. So it's, I don't know. Yeah, it never occurs to Elizabeth that once she turns off the machine, she could just open up a tear into Paris and just skip straight there instead of just going to the whole end of the game. Who gives a shit what Columbia does? <laughs> or just, you know, just... open open a tear and bring GLaDOS into Columbia. Just have her run the show for a while. <laughs> Those portals already look a lot like the portals from Portal. That's a <laughs> That's a dumb sentence, but... Um, yeah, no, there's a, there's a lot of really interesting stuff going on here. I think that, um, like we'd said at the very beginning, I think that some of it is interesting if you haven't really been exposed to this sort of thing over and over again. And some of it would probably be interesting if you're like super high and you're like, what if they went back to that original reality and that was number one, but the number three is totally blah. Because ostensibly when you think about it, the first reality that they start off in where Elizabeth leaves and the Vox Populi don't get the guns they need to revolt. Essentially, just like what the fuck even happens there? They don't have Elizabeth to turn the place into, you know, bombing New York, and they don't have the Vox Populi don't have the guns to revolt. So everything goes back to boring normal. Like I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I guess uh, Comstock goes to another reality to find uh, another Elizabeth. I don't know. It's just does it keep repeating itself? It's getting pretty heavy, dude. <laughs> <laughs> See, there you go. You totally got that stoner voice. But, oh yeah. man, Bioshock! Give it. It's a head trip, man. You, oh, you gotta play what if, it, dog. What if in it's one dead. version of Bioshock, C A T spelled dog? <gasps> what? <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um, so yeah, I I think that's about all I've got. How about you guys? You got anything else that you feel might be interesting to talk about in a spoiler spoiler filled context? Because we're doing this before we do the review. Yeah. So I uh, I don't know. I, I I think it was complicated and I really liked it, but uh, I don't know. Everyone says it was groundbreaking. You've never seen anything like this before. It's like yeah, okay, yeah, whatever. It's 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 not that. It's not a work of pure genius. But I guess that's more review talk. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. You're right. It, it, it's not sliders <laughs> and it's not fringe, but god damn, it's a good game. Because <laughs> everybody knows that sliders and fringe are really the work of true geniuses. <laughs> Fuck Bioshock Infinite. Man, go watch sliders. That's where the real action is. <laughs> god only knows what I'd be. Mean.